Everybody, welcome back to the Dice Tower. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Tom Vassell. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Lost Code here, which is a reworking of a Leo Colavini game called Think Straight, spelled all weird. Yeah, with an eight in the middle. Yeah. Think Straight is a game that I reviewed well, quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. It was from Amigo, and it was an abysmal production. It like, really was, yes. It felt like everything was paper thin. It was... Not particularly good, but I like the game so much, but I actually got rid of it straight up because of production. It's it's one of the worst production being bad, ruining a game ratios that I've ever seen. Right, right, like, yeah. And uh, so we're going to take a look at this, pro at this production and this gameplay and uh, tell you what we think of it. Before we do that, if you like production in games and you want to see what games look like, what better way than to go over to our unboxing channel and check out what a game looks like right out of the box. You get first impressions there, you get to see all the components jumping out of the box, they don't do it by themselves. Normally somebody has to pull them out. We've yet to come across that, but that's a good way to check out uh, production and games and just to see what comes through here. So make sure you check that channel out, the unboxing channel, and let's go ahead and take a look at how this works, and we're gonna be right back. The game's gonna be played over eight, nine, or 10 rounds based on the number of players. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. You are tracking points on the track here with your scoring marker, and you'll be adding some points to that at the end of the game based on your final guesses for which of these tokens you believe you have. So the idea is each player is going to get one of these racks, and you are going to put in that rack one of each of these tokens facing away from you so that you cannot see your own and you are seeing all the other three racks. And you use all four even if you are playing with fewer than four players. There's also one of each of these that's removed at the beginning of the game so that at no point in the game can you have absolutely perfect information. So I'm just going to, for the sake of our example here, I'm going to remove some of these uh, racks and I'm just going to lay the tiles out. But again, remember this player would not be able to see their own tiles. And so they would have something that looks like this. These go from zero to seven. In this case, this player is really getting a weird deal there, but that's what it might be. So those are the tokens they have in front of them. And everybody again has the same thing. Everybody has one of these and a screen in which to, uh, behind which to hide their sheets here. At the beginning of the game, the first thing you'll do is look at all the other three racks and cross off any of the numbers that you see because you know you can never have those numbers. So I would cross off, say, the red four and the green seven. I would just completely scratch them off of my sheet over here. With that done then, the start player, which is whoever's in last place, and that means at the top of this stack, in this case, yellow player, they would pick up the three dice and they would roll those dice. Then they may change one of them to be a different symbol. So they might say, okay, well, I'm going to change that yellow to a purple. And then everyone from the last player forward, so again, in this case right now, it's a yellow, then red below that, then green, then blue. They're going to select one of these wheels and make a guess as to what they think their total is across all three of these tokens. If you have a duplicate, then you're simply accounting for that number twice, all right? So for right now, I might grab, um, uh, let's say, you know, yellow takes and they take uh, this one and they do their thing over there. Then I'm next, I might select uh, this one, for example. And I'm going to make a guess. I would say, I might say something like, well, I think between all three of these, I'm somewhere between a 13 and a 16 and I put that on the wheel. Once everyone has done so, then we're going to check everyone else's answer. Obviously, you can't see your own tile, so you're depending on everybody else to count up your three and then tell you if you're right or wrong. If you are right, you are going to move forward on the score track the number on the wheel you selected. Now, you see over here, there's a couple of threes. This is a three and this is a three. And there's two twos as well. This one has a wider range than this one. So normally you take this two before this one gets taken because it gives you a wider range of numbers, all right? So other players will check my, uh, my board here and say between 13 and 16, yes, that's right, great. I score three victory points. And this is done for everybody. Again, from the back to the front, everything happens in that order. 
Uh, and that's all I'm gonna do about that. Then, if uh, once everybody has been checked, anyone who was wrong and scored no points for that has to pick one of the tiles on their board, they're going to pluck it out of their rack here, lay it face up, they can see it now, so they should scratch it off on their board, and then draw a replacement. So let's say this player was wrong, and it was a uh, purple, uh, blue, green, and they picked this wheel, purple, blue, I'm sorry, purple, blue, green, and they guessed uh, the 12 to 16. Okay, and we all said, that's wrong. And in fact, not only do you get that piece of information, but we also tell you whether it's higher or lower. And so we would say, no, it's lower. Then they pluck one of these, and they lay it face up. They're like, ah, pff, one of those is a one. They scratch off that one, and they take a replacement without looking at it and put it in their rack. Like so, all right? Everyone else can now see that number, and you go to your board, and you mark off that that number is also not possibly on your rack, okay? So that's what you're doing uh, from round to round. And then once everyone has done that, we pass the dice to whoever is currently in last place now, might be the same player. And they're going to roll the dice. They are going to select if they want to switch one. And they are going to, again, from the back to the front, everyone selects a wheel again. You can put them all back once everyone is done. This is also, by the way, there's wheels sitting on here. Uh, near the score track, and so this, when we played, uh, I, I never do this in my plays. They do not go back on there. That's a horrible idea. You leave them out here so that you don't bump the score track. In order to do some things, you're going to be using your sheet. And so right now, let me fold this back. We're going to be using just this part of the sheet for right now. So for the first round here, for example, it was purple, green, and red. I put an X on each of those, and I probably guess between 10 and 16, and if that was right, great, I write that down. Now, if I guess between 10 and 16 and they tell me I'm wrong, it's higher, instead what I'll write here is 17 up to 21, the absolute maximum uh, across three of these tiles because they go up to seven, like I said. So I would do that instead, okay? And then I keep going. If a tile gets revealed, I would write that down. Like here, I found out that what I was holding at that point was a four. And that's going to help me deduce some other things later on. And that's how all of these work. Each one of these lines being its own round, all right? Uh, you write down, if I found out here that I had a seven, then I go back and I write that seven in previous guesses that included blue. So that again, I can do that math. Like over here, at this point I knew... At some point later on, I found this was a seven, so a seven, a four. I now have a much tighter window as to what this red could be, plus I've eliminated some things from looking at my opponent's tiles. At the end of those eight rounds, at least with four players, as you can see here, it's eight rounds, then everyone is going to guess what they think they're holding at that point. And you can guess a single number, you can guess two numbers, or you can guess three numbers. If you made a single guess and that's right, you're going to earn five points for that. If you make two guesses and one of the two is right, doesn't matter which one, you make two points. And if you make all three and one of them is right, you get one point. Any wrong guess or guess you didn't make, and I don't know why you wouldn't make a guess, uh, is going to be negative two, all right? So you lose two points for every wrong guess and you get some points for the right ones. You add that to whatever is currently on the board and whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the game. There are also a few variants included in the box, which is what these symbols over here are for, and a few other tiles. There's an eight of each number. If you wanna make the game more difficult, you can choose to do that. And like I said, a few other things, but that's largely what's going on. The only other quirky thing is this tile over here, which gives you five points if you're right, has a guessing space of a single number. And if you take this one and your answer is not correct, you are not told if it's higher or lower than this. You're simply told yes, and you get five points, or you're told no, that's not it. That's the only one that's like that, okay? But there you go. That should give you an idea of how the game works. Let's go ahead and go back up top. All right, there you go. So that's the lost code. Um, I kind of want to jump right back into production, Tom, because... I've got some issues with the production in this game. Now, there were two versions of this game available on Kickstarter. You could back this production here, this little box with cardboard everything, or you could get the plastic components for an additional charge. I didn't. I backed this. And I thought the cardboard was pretty subpar. I, it feels to me like they almost expected everybody to get the plastic. 
And I don't know if the plastic's good or not. I'm not reviewing the plastic. I haven't really messed it with it. It seems good from yeah. us messing with it. We looked at it a little, but yeah, we didn't play with it. Right. The cardboard ones, putting those logs together that hold your numbers were an absolute pain. Like, the thing frays. They're annoying to get together. I had to get one that literally, I had to put a drop of glue on there and squeeze it and hold it. So that it could be rebuilt because it was fraying so much I could no longer get the cardboard to, to go where it needed to go. It, it gets hurt from that. I'm putting that out there right now. I don't like this production. And I'll even go uh, a little further and say that I wonder if Mojito Studios, the makers of this game, if they don't just generally have a little bit of a production issue. Because all their games before, uh, or their game before this one, I also had serious production issues with, so... Yeah, they make things look nice, for sure. Their games look good, they have good good graphics, good artwork. But I've got some problems with their production, and I'm worried about the cardboard tokens also. They could take a little bit of a beating, and if those things are marked, you're done, by the way. There's like, you can sleeve them, and if they are marked, you... The game's unplayable, I would say, at that yes, point. Yes, that hasn't happened yet, but, I mean, we haven't played it up Yeah, time, yeah, it so. could. It could happen, all right? So, gameplay itself. Um, I like this game a lot, and I'm in the same boat as you. I had the original game. I also got rid of the original game because it was... Everything was paper-thin and fiddly. Um, this is a step in the right direction. It doesn't solve all of that, but it brought that gameplay back to the table for me... And this is a really engaging, fun deduction game. Probably one of my favorites. It is definitely in my top ten deduction. Couldn't even be higher. Um, I, man, I'll tell you what. It's deduction mixed with a little bit of push your luck. Right. There's a, a smidge of push your luck because you know usually a range of where your numbers are at. You're like, but what if I made it smaller? You know, I'll get maybe less information on that. Right. But I might get more points, which matters. You could win the game... If you push your luck a little bit during the course of the game and, and do yeah. well at it, right? Um, yeah. But, oh, man, the crunchiness, and this is definitely a crunchy game. Mm -hmm. It's not in the level of sleuth or hooky, maybe, but definitely you're sitting there and adding numbers together and saying, well, therefore, if, if my total is over 14 and one of them's blue and the only numbers I've left for blue are one and one and six, it's probably not one. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. And, and you and you make some some solid I don't know, I just feel like I'm sitting there and you writing have to stuff off. Do it some things. You can deduce some things, straight up get the right final answer, right, for something. But you also have to do a fun amount of intuiting things. Like it's unlikely to be this. And I can kind of test those parameters on the next guess I make which is another fun way to do it. And like you said, you can make points during the game where there's that final push to make points, where you guess what you're holding. I like both of those. They're both valid you know, ways to make victory points. And uh, you need to not just put all your eggs in one of those two baskets, I think. I find it crunchy as well, but it, I don't find it a crippling game. I think a lot of sometimes uh, for deduction games, if they're really thinky or you add too many players... The deduction part of it, to me, becomes just crippling. I'm like, I'm just... It's, my brain's leaking out of my ear over here. I don't know. And somebody sitting across the table over there being like, <laughs> I got two of the seven things. I'm like, I didn't know there were seven things. Like, that's how behind I am. On the other hand, I do think this works well with two. It does. Two, three, four. It scales well. Because of that info... This has a little bit of DNA with the old game Code 777, mm -hmm. where you can see everybody else's stuff but yours, and if you make a mistake, which you're going to make a lot of mistakes, sure, yeah. you replace numbers, which gives you more info, but also gives everyone else more info. Right. And I don't know. the, the It seems like there's the perfect number of colors, different colors in the game. Um, yeah, if you're making a mistake in this game doesn't feel like a mistake. That's the other thing. It's like... You just don't get some points, yeah. which can matter. But you can just swap something out. You're like, oh, okay, that's what it was. You feel like you got some information. You get a new piece. It doesn't feel as punishing to be like, you're wrong. You know, it doesn't feel that bad. Um, there's also, in the game, a couple of variants, which I appreciate. You know, a couple of little things you can throw in to spice the game up. I did not think they were all particularly, you know, fantastic. But it's in there. If you play the, if you play the game a bunch and you want to add a little pizzazz... 
there's some built in in the box, okay? Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm glad that this game is back in print. I'm glad that this is the, you know, the, the format they chose to go with. But I have some issues with that. So I think let's just get into some final thoughts and I'll, I'll restate some of those. Yeah, the production didn't bother me as much, but I also did not go through putting it together. Right. And I also got the plastic version um, for, for the library copy. So I like that. And I do wonder if it's one of those times where they were really like, please buy the plastic. Because companies do that sometimes. Sure. Um, I also didn't like one of the numbers. Five or something. One of the numbers I thought weird. was hard to read. I forget which one it was mm -hmm. now. Um, but I just loved the actual deduction. If it, if I would give it probably a higher number if the production was a little bit better. As it is, I'm still giving an eight point five because I there's very few deduction games that just grab me and make me sit there and think and cross stuff off. And I'm trying to beat everyone else, be the first one to that. And I also use. A little bit of the information that you're asking. I can't always use it, but sometimes it matters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm like, well, you asked a really low number, so you must assume you have low numbers there. And a lot of this game we played, I had, what, all ones? You almost? had a bunch of ones in one of the I games. did not really. <laughs> I mean, it was too late. That would have been great information had I yeah. figured that out earlier, but yeah. I was discarding all the ones that didn't really matter. Well, but, in my overview of the game, I also randomly happened to get a bunch of ones. After I shuffled up all the decks, it was weird. Yeah, but I, I I like this a lot. And this one I'll keep, as opposed to the other one. If you like deduction games, like sheer deduction, this is one of the best. I agree with that. I'm not coming in as high because, yes, I did have to build those logs. And I think the board with the score track, which is not a very good score track, you're supposed to put the wheels on the board and around the board... I did that uh, negative times. I never did that. That seems like a terrible idea, especially with the score track being weaving through these things you're supposed to be pawing at. There's some production issues here. And again, I already had production issues with this game. That's the reason I backed this one. Well, to be clear, these aren't even remotely as bad as the old They're one. not. They're not. But I used to own this game. I used to like this game. And you announce you're doing it again. I'm like, great. Finally, Whew, no production issues. That's the only thing that's wrong with it, actually, is a few production issues. So I'm coming in, I'm going to come in at a 7.5. And that's because I really, really like the game, too. Like you said, it's probably, it's, it's easily for me, and I'm not as big a deduction player as you are, but for me, it's easily top five deduction games. But yeah, I would worry about like building everything be careful with it be ginger with it think about you know who you're playing with make sure you warn people about not scuffing the numbers it just it takes a little bit of kid sleeve gloves them. yeah if you could sleeve them i would say <laughs> sleeve them um so there you go we both do very much like it and at 8.5 that's going to be a seal of excellence for the lost code here and the game is excellent so there you go, folks that's going to do it for us my name is z garcia use your logic to figure out who i am there you go, baby, the lost code.